Hey, I'm preaching today. How many said, oh, no? <laughs> Y'all love me. I know you do. Well, I'm a grandpa three times. I, so my, my favorite daughter-in-law, she's the only one I got, uh, she had a baby Tuesday. They named her Essie Lynn. Lynn after my wife's middle name, L-Y-N-N. -N. Yeah, and, and Essie means star. It's a French word, E-S-S-I-E. -S -S -E. She was born Tuesday, and uh, Sam and Paisley are pretty excited, the brother and sister. So Sam's middle name is L-E-W-I-S, is my middle name, right? And Essie is L-Y-N-N. -N. Susan's middle name must be my wife. And, and then uh, Paisley's middle name is uh, Elizabeth's mother's middle name after Elizabeth's mother. But there's a problem in that Elizabeth's dad's middle name has not yet been used. So they need to have another baby, and it needs to be a boy. You hear me, Elizabeth? Amen. Ooh, I didn't like that look. I can't, I can't see it, but I know it's there. I don't. I'm happy. Grandma's happy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, recently, really recent since I've been up here to preach, Susan and I uh, celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary. 45 years. 45. Same old lady I've lived with 45 years. I mean, same woman. They call her Saint Susan for that very reason right there. Saint Susan. She's lived with me that long. We, we, we laugh. We have some good times. We, 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 we argue, and, and she wins. But, uh, <laughs> but we, 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 do, we do laugh at things. And the other night, because, uh, you know, she's older than me. Y'all know she looks younger, but she's not. Okay, that's all called genetic thing. I look like 10 years older. She looks 10 years younger, but we're the, about the same age. She's three months older than me. And that's the truth because I'm preaching on truth. And... Um, <laughs> But she, we were laying in bed the other night, and she goes, can you believe it? I said, believe what? We just signed up for Medicare. I said, yeah. I turned 65 June 10. That's a, you know, and so, what, Pastor Luke, what I'd like is some, some sort of gift cards for breakfast somewhere. There's, I love breakfast, so it would be good. June 10. Pastor Jeff, you're late to church. Where were you? Okay. Um. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's one thing going on in my life. 45 years, most of them good. Um, so I saw someone posted, raise your hand if it was you, uh, put down what you love. Uh, who did that? Anybody that was here somewhere? I saw, put down what you love. And I, and I put, uh, well, obviously, if you're talking spiritual, it'd be God, you know, but I don't think that's what you meant, you know, because like as Christians, we're not going to just write that because, I mean, that's the obvious, right? So, but I put people. That's, I love people. I can't help it. I love people. If I'm with people, I'm happy. I love people, especially any, any age, any color, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. I love them. Male, female, babies, fifth graders, fifth graders, fifth graders, fifth graders. I teach fifth graders on Wednesday night. I, I love them. I'm, 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 I love them enough to let them go on the sixth grade about in August. <laughs> I, I love them that much. Uh, send them on to Pastor Zach. But uh, I do love God and I love people, and God, God loves us, doesn't he? He loves you, right? And uh, <clears throat> starting in June, July, we're going to do a, a little series, and really we're, we're talking about believing the truth from God and God's word and not listening to the lies that are the antidotes to Jesus and what his word says, his word is true. We have the Holy Spirit who is holy, we have the Holy Word who is holy, we have a holy God, and God wants us to be a holy people. And, uh, but the enemy does it like holiness. He wants just the opposite. <clears throat> and you do have an enemy of your soul. The Bible makes it clear. <clears throat> and he's not a foe that you can come against in your own strength, your own intelligence, your own wisdom, or your own uh, wit, or anything else. I mean, you are undone if you don't have the power of God living in you and helping you. But Satan is no one to fear. 
In fact, the Bible says that he fears the name of Jesus. The Christ who lives in us, the Holy Spirit, who he fears, he trembles, he runs. And we are not to be afraid. We are not being given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And there's some scriptures I'm going to lay groundwork here this morning just to give you kind of a, a groundwork of where I'm going here with this. But when I talk about liar, liar, pants on fire, I'm talking about the enemy. And so the first text is usually pulled out of context. Is something funny? Oh. Well, that's really cool. <clears throat> the illustrations are not my own, <clears throat> but I like them. And your Bible, this is the main text you'll want to note, and it, you have to keep it in context. How many of you know the scripture that uh, the, the devil is a, a, a liar and the fa a father of liars? You know that? Well, you've got to see it in context. Here it is in John 8, 31 to 45. And so what's happening here, Jesus is disputing the religious people <clears throat> Who believe they're, they're people of true faith. It's the people that oppress the poor. It's the religious leaders. It's the false teachers. That's who he's dealing with. Who think of themselves as true people of God and children of, uh, of, uh, of Abraham, as it were. And Jesus is going to say, you're not children of Abraham. You're children of the devil. That's who you are. And that was not very nice of Jesus to say that. But sometimes the Holy Spirit says something to you you don't like. And sometimes you tell what the Bible teaches and others don't like it and they think it's not nice. But the truth is always nice and the truth is always kind when it's said with love because the truth sets you free. And, and many times, if you didn't tell your children the truth to warn them about, about the warnings that, that are necessary in life, then you leave your children open to hurt and destruction. It's important you warn them about things that you know, and that's what God does. Everything he does is out of love and out of grace and mercy. And uh, so even when he's tough on the religious people, and by the way, the religious people were racist. You know, they didn't like Samaritans. They didn't like Gentiles. Those religious people not only were racist, they were elitist. They fed their fat calf, fat calf themselves, you know, like we're big shots, we, we get all the money. Uh, even the, the rabbis in some of the smaller towns and synagogues, they were starving because of the people in charge, the high priest, the chief priest, all those guys. This is who he's talking to. And uh, they, they were elitist. They were, they were chauvinistic. They were male, uh, uh, well, what do you want to call it, supremists or whatever, you know, like men. The Bible, the, the Bible makes men and women equal, Okay. In Christ, there is no male nor female. Wives, turn to your husbands. Women, turn to the men around you and say, I'm just as good as you. You're not better than me. Go ahead and do it right now. <laughs> See, God loves every person. He loves every nation. And I'm, I appreciate the freedom. I see. I was born in '53, and you know, '41 to '45 isn't far from '53. And at that time, people really appreciated because there was a lot of people alive that their their sons and their daughters died for, for, for in that in that war to keep Hitler from dominating and his evil to, to be spread. So I'm very thankful for that. But America is not the only only great country. We need to remember, but they're not the only great company. And there's great people all over this world. And there's believers, as the Bible mentions in heaven, there's going to be people there from every tribe, tongue, and nation. And every person matters. That's why we do missions. That's, you know, every person matters. And I'm telling you, the enemy wants you to think that you're better than someone else or that they're better than you or that God somehow has selected you and you're some like favorite little child. All of God's children he loves, and those that are lost he loves. He's reaching to them with truth. So here's a dispute, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, as I picture this, I wish I could have been there and heard the tone of Jesus here. I, I, I just, I think, you know, he's passionate. And by the way, <clears throat> I don't preach as good. Don't you love these young pastors when they preach? Aren't they good? I mean, Luke knocked it. I mean, don't you love it? Really? I mean, I do. 
And, and when you don't have as much to say, you just spit when you preach, and it comes across good. So that's what I'm going to do today. So John 8, 31 to 45. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. Notice in the context, the truth. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the life, the truth. Jesus is truth. He speaks truth. His word is truth. It's the Holy Spirit of truth. Jesus Christ is true. And truth really sets you free. So we may be what we think free in America, but unless Jesus sets you free, you're no, you can live right in a country that has freedom of religion and other things and be a slave to your bigot bigotry type thinking be a slave to your lustful heart you be a slave to your greedy heart you be a slave to all kinds of sins what look go on he says the truth will set you free they answered him and these are he's talking to the teachers that aren't really they're, they're they're not really of god we are abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone how can you say that we shall be set free so many people that think they sit in churches all over and they don't realize they're enslaved to lies, enslaved to attitudes, enslaved to hatred, enslaved to jealousy, enslaved to sin. And he says, how can you say we have to be set free? Jesus said, verily, truly, I say, or truly, truly, I'm telling you the truth. I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. In other words, you'll be a son, no longer a slave. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you're looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. And I'm telling you, Jesus says, I'm telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. That set him back, didn't it? He said, Abraham is our father, they answered. Like, what are you saying? Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you're looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You're doing the works of your own father. They answered, they, they protested, we're not illegitimate children. The only father we have is God himself. How many people will say that? They say, I'm a child of God. Jesus wasn't buying it here. I don't know if he buys your, what you think or not for yourself, but he wasn't buying it here. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I've come here from God. I've not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's not nice, Jesus. You belong to your father, the devil. How would you like Jesus to tell you that? Let me ask you something. Could that be a possibility sitting here today in the midst of our religion? Something's wrong with our heart. God's spirit hadn't put the right perspectives in our heart. And that we're religious. Proud. Elitist. Male dominant, racist, selfish, and not Christian at all? Could it be? You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. That's Satan. Satan has desires. I'll talk about that. He was talking to Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. What did it say at the beginning? Verse 31, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. Verse 32, you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. And now he's saying that Satan is a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. Jesus is truth. Satan is lies. When he lies, he speaks his native language. That's Satan. For he's a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of a sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God, here's what God says. And the reason you do not hear is that you don't belong to God. Ouch! Now, Jesus didn't get away with that. 
Can you imagine you ever telling someone, you don't belong to God? Not nice. Right? What's the difference here? The difference is he's dealing with these religious people that was obvious they weren't of God. The difference is he's the son of God. And I don't think you should run around telling people that kind of stuff. I wouldn't advise saying, you're the devil, your father. You don't belong to God. Okay? I don't think that's the good advice, and that's not what I'm preaching. How many think that you should do that? Raise your hand. One. Oh, what, you were just moving your hair. Never mind. <laughs> Got to be careful when you kind of move your hand when I ask a weird question. See, here's the deal. If you're religious without the Holy Spirit heart of love and truth, then you'll end up being judgmental, unforgiving, condemning. You won't have any mercy. You won't have any grace. You point the accusing finger. And the thing of it is, is, is you'll look just like the people Jesus was talking to in that passage. Now, a few more shorter passages. First Peter 5, 8, you know this one. Be alert and sober mind. You have an enemy. Your enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's the real deal. He's after, he's after anyone he can. But here's the deal about that verse. Just be aware you have an enemy and don't listen to him. Don't follow his path. Do not let him influence you. Know that sometimes the enemy works through others. Don't let it discourage you. Don't let it bring you down. Don't let it make you give up and walk away from your faith. People will always hurt you and let you down, but never Jesus. Are you hearing with me? Are you with me? People will hurt you, but not Jesus. He will love you. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. The thief, meaning Satan, comes to steal. What's he going to steal? Your faith. If he steals your faith, it's, but we're saved by faith, by grace through faith. Faith isn't belief. You, you, you can believe without any faith. Faith takes what you believe and reaches to Jesus and repents and grace invades and changes you by the power of the Spirit. That's why you're born again by the Spirit, not knowledge. The Spirit invades your heart and changes your heart. And there is no one that's a real Christian that's racist, that is an elitist, that's a chauvinist, that is all about, uh, what, what's the other thing that I really hate? I hate, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, some things that God hates, and I can't remember. <laughs> okay? I'm just telling you, like, you know, everything that has a heart is alive, folks. God loves every beating heart. What God loves is the heart. You know, you know what I say? I, I love people and I love God. I love people so much. I love being with people. I mean, you know what I, I love? I, I told Rebecca over here, Rebecca, hi, Rebecca. Your hair looks pretty today. I told her, I said, I love you so much. Thanks, Pastor. I love you. See, you know what I love? I love your heart because you have God's heart. You know what I love? I, 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 love, I love your spirit because you have God's spirit. I love the fact that you, you're gracious and merciful because that's who God is. I love because I can see Jesus in you. That's what I love. I love God in people. I can't help it. I mean, I, I go nuts when I see God in people. You know, I mean, like Nevi Rowe, you know, she's like 140, 50 years old, somewhere in there. <laughs> Nevi's right back there. And is she in here? Uh-oh, Nevi, I'm sorry you're not here. Uh, but she's about this, she's about this big, and, but she's huge because of her heart. It's a God heart. Everything about God is in her. You see God. But a religious spirit stinks, but a God spirit is beautiful. And the, the thing is, that's what God hates is that religious spirit, that, that accusing, judgmental, I, I'm better than you uh, spirit, the unforgiving spirit. The thief comes to steal your faith and then kills you and destroys you. You see, Satan wants eternal destruction for you when God has brought eternal life to you by giving his son Jesus. See, the bottom line is Satan is against you and he wants to destroy you. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, talking about six things that God hates. There's seven are detestable to him. It says this, these are six things. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are attestable. And if you are of God and have his heart, you'll hate these things too. A haughty eyes, that's pride. That was Satan. A lying tongue, that's Satan. Hands that shed innocent blood, that's Satan. A heart that devises wicked schemes, that's Satan. Feet that are quick to rush to evil, 
that Satan, look at this again. Not only you see lying tongue, now you see it again. A false witness who pours out lies. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. The community is the church, in the church. In the, in the community of believers he's talking about. Let me tell you something. God hates that. He hates it because everything opposite of that is what God wants for us. He wants truth in the inward hearts. A broken and a contrite heart. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He wants those who believe in life and support life, love people. Acts 5.3, uh, and notice how Satan is mentioned here. The story where Ananias said, I'm going to give all this money, I'm going to sell it and give it all to God's work. God didn't care if he would have given, like said up front, you know, I'm going to sell it and I'm going to keep half of it and give half of it. But he said no, because he wanted to be thought of big shot. I'm going to give it all. I'm going to sell the land. I'm giving it all. In Acts 5, 3, Peter said, Ananias, how is it Satan has filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit? See, Satan's a liar, and he puts lies in the hearts of man, so much so that we even can lie to the Holy Spirit and pretend to be okay and lie to yourself going, everything's good, everything's good. Uh-uh, don't, don't talk to me, Holy Spirit. Nope, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. And we push away conviction of the Holy Spirit, and we lie to ourselves and we lie to the Holy Spirit, go, yep, we got that cross, got that T cross, got that dot I. I'm all good. Everything's good by me. In other words, we don't want to examine our heart. Satan has filled your heart that you've lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received land. And then 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, he's writing to false teachers. He's writing to false teachers and he's saying, you, you're pretending to be something you're not. You're pretending to be people of the light, but you're actually people of darkness. And he says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, and no wonder... For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. You see, Satan, mark this down, Satan hates everything God loves. He loves you, he hates you. Satan hates you. Do you know He's not your friend. Satan hates you. Big deal, I don't care. God kicked him out. I don't know where he came from, where he went. Created being by God. Kicked him and all the rebellious angels out. We got demons, we got Satan. They're against us, but they can't touch us. The Bible says they tremble at the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is victory over them. They're trying to point the accusing finger and says, you're guilty, you're guilty. That's what it says in Revelation about Satan. And God says, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. See, I, I'm not going to listen to Satan, and I don't want to be sin conscious because if I look at sin and go, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to be good, I'm going to be good, then we, don't have, no, we have no power. I want to be Jesus-focused and Jesus-conscious. I want to connect, like Pastor Luke said, to Jesus so that the fullness of Jesus by nature just falls off me like fruit so that the power of God is in me to be an overcomer. See, Jesus never wanted us to be. He wants us to be set free. He doesn't want us to be slaves to sin. The truth will set you free. Jesus, when he would heal somebody, he'd say, go and sin no more. And yet, we believe this lie that we're weaklings. You know, I mean, tell me something. How hard is it really if you have God's Spirit to walk in the fruit of God's Spirit? You have His Holy Spirit. The fruit is God's Spirit. How hard is it to be kind, to be patient, to be good, to be, to be uh, uh, gentle, to have self-control? I mean, except for when you have chips and salsa there and you're trying not to eat them. I mean, that's hard. I get that. But other than that, I mean, how hard is it? I mean, God, God is in us. He can help us. We can't make excuses. And I, I don't know what I think about sinless perfection. You know, God is perfect. He's the only perfect one. In sin. But I don't believe we should just wallow around in sin and, and, and think, well, that's the best I got going. You know, everybody's a sinner, so what? That's a, that's a false message of religion of today, of the false grace message. That's not what grace does. Grace is a power that gives you a new desire and enables you to live that out by the what was the word used, Pastor Luke? By the connecting to Jesus, the attachment of Jesus. Not by the application of what I know is right and wrong, by pulling up my bootstraps. See, God has got something powerful to say about every one of you in this good stuff. You're precious in his sight. You're the apple of his eye. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And the enemy, everything he says and everything that he's made you, and he's made you special, he knows you perfectly he knows you by name. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He, 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 he praying for you, the Father. He cares about every one of you. And yet Satan whispers lies against everything that this book says about you. His method, his only method is to lie. 
Lie, 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 like a politician. Wait, that wasn't in my notes. So Satan hates everything God loves. And listen, Satan promotes everything God hates. Satan promotes lies. He promotes unforgiveness. He promotes judgmentalism. He promotes racism. He promotes elitism. He promotes selfishness. He promotes uh, male chauvinism. He promotes all that stuff. He promotes denominationalism. Family God better than Baptist. Lutherans better than Baptist. The worst in the world are the Baptists because we're something else. Hey, I'm a messed up mutt. I got some Baptist in me. I got a little Methodist. I got some assembly of God and a little bit of Presbyterian. Yeah, you can take me home, feed me something in a little bowl, I'll be happy. Just keep me watered. Let me out at night. That's all I ask. You see, God, Satan lies, and here's the truth. Now, mark this down. We can't stop Satan from lying, but we are responsible for what, who we believe. You're going to believe him or God? You're going to believe the book, or are you going to believe Satan's lies? And his lies appeal to your flesh, and his lies appeal uh, directly to you, to sin, because he knows sin destroys relationships. So, there's a song that says, but a voice of truth tells me a different story. There's all kinds of lies in this world, the lies you'll tell yourself from the flesh that's not redeemed. You see, if your heart isn't changed, your thinking's not changed because the heart is not only feeling but thinking, if it's not changed, then you're going to think lies by nature. That's insecurity. You're going to think poor of yourself, or maybe you're going to be proud and think better. And Paul says that it's not right to, to think, to compare yourself one with another, because otherwise you think you're better than someone, or you think you're not as good as someone. Okay? Here's the thing. I am so good that I don't need my hair. That's how good I am. Some of you, God knows you need that hair to feel good, you know? No, that's all wrong, stupid stuff. But that's, in a silly way, what the devil does to us. Like, I'm beautiful. So what? You're going to get old and crusty like me? I used to be beautiful. You're not any better. It's because you're beautiful and I'm ugly. I'm okay with it. Now, don't come up to me and say, Pastor, you're not ugly. You're a handsome man. I, I know I'm a handsome man, but I say that to be funny. I like to laugh at myself because I work hard at being funny. My wife says, quit giving up. You're not funny. And I say, I'm going to keep trying. Now, there, Satan has some, you know, God promotes faith, and Satan promotes fear. And so, Satan has favorite lies, and here they are. They're all it's real simple. In Genesis, the first one we see, God can't be trusted. He says, God can't be trusted. Even Adam, they're in there, the, ser the serpent comes, Satan tempts them, and then he says, are you sure God meant that? I, I, don't, I, I don't think he meant God just knows that if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like a God. Go ahead and do it. Well, he already said you're made after the image of God. So he, for one of his lies is God can't be trusted. He's not good. Another lie, and read Romans 1, 21 to 24, is that if it feels good, do it. Burger King, have it your way. If it feels good, do it. Eat a double Whopper every day for the next six months and see what you look like. Go ahead and, get, and do the exercise French fry. Yeah, you'll look pretty interesting when it's all over. No, you can't live if it feels good, do it. If you, you follow what God's word gives you to do. Another lie is <clears throat> some things just can't be forgiven. Read Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Some things can't be forgiven. He lies, he says, well, you've blown it. You can't be forgiven, it's over. Unpardonable sin, this, that. You know, if the Holy Spirit's convicting you, then you haven't committed the unpardonable sin. If you feel like I need to ask forgiveness, you haven't committed the unpardonable sin. If you want to get closer back to God, you haven't committed the unpardonable sin. You hear me? In fact, I think it's when you resist God's grace in his Holy Spirit calling and you die is when it can be committed. That you resist it, resist it, resist it, and resist it, and resist it. 
Because when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, it's the Spirit that saves you and points you to Jesus, and you push him away and push him away and push him away and push him away, and finally you die, and you've resisted the Holy Spirit, so now it's too late. Are you with me? Maybe I'm wrong. If you disagree, it's okay. Uh, I, I, I'm okay with that, but that's what, that's what I think. I just don't want you to think, you know, because Satan wants to keep you away from Jesus by saying you're not good enough. You did it. You already blown it. You're never going to get there. I don't believe that. I hope no one here thinks that they're so rotten that Jesus won't forgive you. The Bible says he makes you white as snow. He cleanses every sin. He makes it as if you didn't even sin. He puts it in the sea, forgiving us to remember, to, to remember it no more. He doesn't even remember it against you. It's not like he's forgetful. It's just that he's not going to hold it against you. Go, well, I, I'm sorry I did. They keep bringing it up and say, hey, look, we, we already, I already forgave him that a long time ago. Quit bringing it up. I'm tired of hearing it. Right? Another one is that money's the key to happiness, 1 Tim, Timothy 6, 5 to 11. Money's not the key to happiness, and money can't buy your love. So Satan wants you to make you think, if I just got a bigger car, had a little more money, I did this, I could go, I could really travel, I had money to do this and do that, then everything would be better. But you get more in the life, your life is more miserable because now you've got to polish more stuff, clean more stuff, you know, attend to more stuff, you know. <clears throat> I mean, it just gets to be ridiculous. It just doesn't, okay? I think sometimes the poorer you are, the happier you are. It's just kind of sometimes because, you know, you get too many riches, you just don't go after Jesus. And really, the fullness of joy and happiness is Jesus full in you. And that's where we're missing it. The American church is so messed up. I mean, we have a false message going out everywhere. It's like, it's like universal salvation. It's like everybody sins, and your sin's okay because they're not perfect either. And so one of, the, one of the things that he says is God grades on a curve. Or, you know, you're not as good uh, as someone else. You're better than someone else. God grades on a curve. God's blamed for, the blame for all the bad things that happen. He says, you might as well live it up because you only go around once, have it your way. So here in this, you have three sins that Satan uses. The lust of the eyes, which is materialism. Money's going to buy me something. So I'm going to get all this stuff, and I'll go ahead. Because that's Satan's kingdom, which is temporary and physical and earthly, and it's going to pass away and all the stuff with it. And yet somehow Satan talks people into living for this life like, you only go around once, you better go for it, you know. So we run here, we run there. God spoke to me the other day. He said, well, one of the, I, God spoke to me because I always think, you know, the God of this world is like pleasure. We just got money. We just go. We just, we just entertain ourselves. We're just pleasure crazy. God said, no, it's not pleasure. It's family. The God of America is family. Family. Family before everything. Kids, grandkids, everything before God. I'm going, I don't understand that, but I think God's right. I believe he spoke to me very clearly. So, you know, it's, it's not like here we, we're on earth and this is what life is. It's not how we live it up here. And God's not to blame for all the bad things that happen, but Satan's going to put it on him. Every time something bad happens, Satan and sin is what the problem is. That's what's caused the breakdown. Everything was eternal and joy forever, and Satan and sin come in. Evil comes from Satan and from man, Satan in man. And the breakdown of all things, even creation, the Bible says, groans because of this fallen world that we're a part of. We're not of it, but we're in it. And, and so we can get sick. God can heal us. But we can have accidents. It may take our life, but we go to, to heaven. So we walk with Jesus until the final day, right? But we don't, it's no good to blame God for all the bad stuff that happens. And God doesn't grade on a curve. Well, I'm just as good as someone else. He doesn't. And you're not better than anybody else, and you're not worse than anybody else. It's this relationship between you and God. Let God deal with the other people. God's a judge, not you. Just let God deal with it. Why does Jesus talk about grace and mercy? That's who he is. He wants us to be that. And forgiveness, you won't be forgiven unless you forgive others. Because it's the same way he was dealing with the religious leaders that were hypocrites. And they were religious. They treated others poorly. I can't forgive you. I can't talk you into being forgiven. You just got to go after Jesus and find the one that will and change your heart. So the reason that uh, the, 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 there's many other lies that God gives, gives to you. Lies that cause fear instead of faith. There's all kinds of lies. Those are just some of them. So, but why does Satan lie? And it's to destroy relationships. 
The Bible says we're to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves to love others. And he wants to destroy our relationship with God and he wants to destroy your relationship with others because sin hurts other people. Then he's going to tempt you. He's going to pull you down paths. He's going to bring people in your life to take you down paths. He's going to try to talk you into the reality of God, the truth of God's word, everything. He's undermining everything that God says. Satan lies and says, ah, that's not true. He just knows this. Oh, I know the book says that, but it's not true. That's an old book. It's not relatable today. But the Bible says God doesn't change and his word doesn't change. It's forever and ever. Pornography, lust is still a sin. Adultery is still a sin. Living in, out of wedlock is still a sin. The things that this book says are wrong are wrong. They're sinful. So why does Satan lie to destroy your relationship with God, destroy your relationship with others? Because when you do, it hurts others. When you live sinful, you break, you hurt others, you destroy your relationship with yourself. When he lies to you, he says, you can't do anything. You're worthless. You're not forgiven. You know, he whispers, you know, against other people to cause you to be hateful. You're destroying yourself by listening to the lies of the devil. The devil, you know, God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Just let it be. It says, you know, walk, walk in love, mercy, grace. Don't hurt yourself. Let it go. You only hurt yourself when you live the lies of Satan. The thing is, is there might be truth in what we know, but Satan lies to get us to not be what God wants us to be by whispering. He whispers stuff that causes jealousy, causes envy. He whispers stuff that causes conflict between people. And, you're, you know, he'll whisper to you, someone's having a private conversation, you don't know what's going on right here. Maybe one of them had lost their spouse uh, uh, to death or a brother or a sister or a mom or a dad, and they're talking, and, and the devil's got you so paranoid, he's whispering and saying they're talking about you, and they don't like you. It's, that's all lies. See, Satan lies because he wants to destroy relationships with God, others, yourself, and to destroy the effectiveness of the church by hurt and division. And Satan wants to destroy from the inside out. He infiltrates. The, the, the character James Bond that was written about in all the movies is based on a true infiltrator in World War II. He was from uh, Serbia, I believe. I've got my notes here. And, and uh, he's a Serbian double agent. And what he did is he gave the Germans wrong information. And he was a very wealthy person, a very handsome person. I think I have a picture of him. And he's the one that the, that the, uh, that the, uh, the character of James Bond was built on in all the movies and their written books. And in 1975, this guy right here, his last name is Popov, P-O-P-O-V. And he, uh, uh, he wrote an autobiography about his espionage. And he was known, even for movie stars, he was, a, he was immoral. He was lewd. He was... He would have affairs with all kinds of women as he uh, worked for uh, the, the Germans really liked him because he had a lot of business connections. And so he would be able to get on the inside of the Germans and lie to them and help us to get secrets because uh, he was actually infiltrated in their intelligence department of their army. So true story, that guy right there, immoral, helped, helped uh, uh, Britain, Great Britain and America beat Hitler, 1941-45. He wrote an autobiography uh, uh, about himself. Uh, it was titled uh, Spy Counter Spy. So his name is Dusko, D-U-S-K-O, Popov, P-O-P-O-V. And Satan does the same thing, only to hurt. He wants to get on the inside of the church, and he puts people that don't have the fruit of the Spirit, that are divisive, hurtful, gossiping people, that aren't of God at all. How many know what I'm saying? How, so what's the best way to bring the enemy down from the inside out? So people, don't let Satan use you. I don't believe anybody here wants that. And let's stand up and say, we are going to believe the truth. How many of you know that Satan tries to lie to you about using insecurities, all kinds of things, your flesh? How many of you know he tries to lie to you to get you, tempt you? He says things like, oh, once won't hurt. Oh, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, it won't matter. Oh, just one more time, it'll be okay. You know, and just on and on, he just comes at you constantly. And there's a voice of truth. You've got to decide. He's going to keep lying, but what are you going to believe? What are you, who are you going to believe? 
Believe the book. The book is positive. It's full of love and grace and mercy. The book believes in you. The book says God made you special. Okay? Let's, don't, let's, let's just lay the groundwork that Satan is a liar, but he has no authority here, no power of you, he, you, and you do not have to fear him. He's a defeated foe. The songwriter says there is no fear to Scripture in the perfect love of God. And Satan, you have no authority here. For, for this habitation was made for the Lord's presence. You have no authority here. He is done and undone and defeated. A foe that's defeated under the foot of Jesus Christ. And we're the church and he's afraid of you and me. And his only weapon is to lie to you. Don't believe him. Will you stand with me? How many of you believe the lie that you can't be forgiven? Close your eyes if you would to respect your neighbor. You believe a lie that I can't be forgiven, that I've sinned and I can't be forgiven and you need forgiveness today because the truth says God is here to forgive you. Would you lift your hand? Anybody here? Yes, I see your hands. The enemy's a liar. You said, I, I want forgiveness. The enemy's tried to make me doubt if I can be forgiven and I'm gonna accept God's forgiveness and believe the truth. God so loved the world that he offered his own son that you might have eternal life and the forgiveness of sin. How many of you know that sometimes you struggle with believing lies from the devil and you get trapped by his lies and you live weak and you live caught in sins because you don't choose to believe the truth and you want to start believing the truth and listening to the voice of truth and to God's truth. So raise your hand all over this place and say, I'm going to start believing what God has to say about me and others. Love believes the truth. Love believes the best in others. Love is what God is encompassed. Amen? He doesn't want you beat down. Satan hates you. Everything he says is to beat you down, beat you up, render you ineffective, cause you, if you're not going to lose your faith, at least to shut your mouth. Because he says, who are you to tell anybody anything? Look at you. I know your secret stuff. And Satan just, I mean, he's just on it all the time, isn't he? Don't listen to that voice. Learn to tune it out and learn to tune in to the voice of God that speaks what the Word says. Young people, you're precious. See, the devil had me believing I couldn't do anything. Let me tell you something. With God's Spirit in you, all things are possible. Amen? All things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can go through hard times. I can go through blessings. And I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. He's the author, the finisher of our faith. Guys, listen to the voice of truth, God's voice of grace, mercy, love, kindness, and forgiveness. Amen?